Renewal and reform represents a vast and indeed emerging body of work. Various elements of the Renewal and Reform Programme have been coming before Synod for a number of years now for consideration and debate. And this has helped shape the work and general direction of the task groups charged with taking different parts of the programme forward. The purpose of this paper is to provide an overarching and unifying narrative that encompasses all that we're seeking to do. It sets out the vision which will determine the direction and parameters of our ongoing travel. The bullet points in paragraphs 6, 8 and 12 serving as, decision, as a decision-making framework for future work. It's about being the church God calls us to be, to do the work God calls us to do. And it's about playing our part in building the kingdom of God by being a church that's fit for the task in today's world. As the paper before you states, the vision and narrative for renewal and reform is rooted in an understanding of Luke 10 too, as relevant today as it was when Jesus spoke those words. The harvest is indeed plentiful, and the potential enormous. There's a deep thirst and hunger in our world for a spirituality that gives both people and communities meaning and purpose in an increasingly complex and often confusing world. There's a need for hope and a longing for a rock or an anchor that will hold firm in the fast and ever-changing contexts in which we live. God calls us to respond with his love and with the hope of the gospel so that the plentiful harvest might be reaped. This is the vision at the heart of the Renewal and Reform Programme, which this paper seeks to outline. It's not about fixing the church, rather it's about reaching out to a needy world with the faith and resources that God has given to us so that lives and communities might be transformed. Part of this work will be about being transformed ourselves as we look, listen and learn in the parishes and chaplaincies that God has placed us. God is already at work around us, not just in our churches. And our task is to discern what he's doing and work with him in making and nurturing disciples, in challenging injustice and seeking the common good. This will require us to look in new and sometimes challenging places and be prepared to be surprised by the people God is calling and the ways in which God is already working. It will also require us to commit ourselves to becoming a more diverse church where everyone, not just people who are like us, can belong and feel genuinely welcome. As a church, we'll need to be humble enough to listen to the voices of those who are yet don't, as yet don't belong or don't feel welcome and listen to what God is saying to us through them so that our churches might better reflect the communities they seek to serve. This overarching narrative seeks to place the Renewal and Reform Programme firmly within the hopeful future that we believe is ours in Jesus Christ. It articulates a vision that is to be worked out locally in parishes and dioceses, depending on their context and need. It's not, as some fear, a one-size-fits-all programme that seeks to impose ways of being and ways of working from outside. The hope is rather to provide a framework and resourcing that releases and encourages, stimulates and supports the mission and ministry of the church in a myriad of different ways that are appropriate for the myriad of contexts in which we serve as well as those God may be calling us into. The hopeful future has to be articulated primarily at diocesan level. And so we're talking about developing a church that's confident across the diversity of traditions and about churches working out their discipleship and faith 
their social and community engagement wherever they happen to be. What will be right in one place won't always be right in another. What will work in one context won't necessarily work in another. Each church and diocese will need to be both resourceful and creative. What will matter is the local church, as ever, meeting people where they are and communicating something of the transforming love of God in all that it says and does. Partnerships will be crucial, and this too will differ according to context. But they're likely to be with other churches, local businesses, agencies, and civic authorities. And in order to further this hopeful future, Renewal and Reform seeks to equip and resource for the vibrant and multifaceted body of Christ we are called to be. The challenges are immense. And the vision and narrative that this paper outlines doesn't fight shy of facing up to the reality of the situation in which we find ourselves. But it's a reality that does not constrain our vision. The vision of a plentiful harvest that's galvanizing us and urging us on to address those things that are holding us back. They are the nettles we have to grasp if our mission is going to be based on opportunity and not defined by our diminishing resources. Much has been said about what's sometimes perceived as an overly secular management style approach that the Church of England has adopted in the face of its current challenges. Renewal and reform is very much about harnessing the resources that have been entrusted to us and managing them in a way that will enable us to be as effective as possible. There's nothing to fear in that. At its simplest, it's about being responsible with the way in which we use the funds, the people, the experience and the wisdom we have at our disposal so that we can be ambitious for God and enable not just a sustainable but a confident future. Managing our resources is simply about being good stewards, which includes not only ensuring that we use our resources well, but that we exercise mutuality in terms of sharing what we have appropriately, learning from one another and holding one another to account as members of the body of Christ. And the peer, group, peer review process has already begun this. Whilst every context is unique, sharing good practice as well as resources is part and parcel of being good stewards, so that there's an ongoing learning across the church as we journey together. And finally, we do want to work for a growing church, and growing in numbers is just one part of this. Indeed, we believe that growing in numbers will be the inevitable outcome of the wider elements of growth which the Renewal and Reform Programme is seeking to encourage. Essentially, we're looking for growth in faith, in hope and love, as we, and disciples yet to be, are nurtured in, and encouraged to live out the Gospel and make Christ known. We're looking for growth in confidence, creativity and imagination as we seek to be bold in reaching out to share with others what God has done and is doing for us. We're looking for ways of helping people to grow in their prayer and spirituality, in their understanding of God and his purposes for the world, in their giving and serving. The vision for renewal and reform is to do all that we can with the resources available to us now to further that growth. It is then, and by God's grace alone, that we'll see growth in the number and diversity of people in our churches and in the finances and other resources we have to further our work for God's mission in the world, so that more and more people will come to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. The task groups are well into their work. Further theological reflections have been commissioned to enrich and underpin the various elements of the work, and those will be put on the Renewal and Reform Facebook page. 
We now need to trust in the God who calls us ever onwards. We need to trust in our bishops and we need to trust one another as we continue to pray and journey together. Members of Synod, I commend this paper to you and look forward to a rich and fruitful debate on the vision and narrative it offers. I beg to move the motion standing in my name.